These always get lost. They just get lost. A L M P. There's so many wonderful ways you can organize a bookshelf. This is probably the best because I did it. Describe your bookshelves at home. We have two bookshelves flanking our television. The left side is books we haven't read. The right side is books we have read. I currently have one, two, three. I have a bunch. I have two bookshelves that surround my TV. They are triple stuffed. <laughs> They're nice and tall. They've got two plants on top of each. I mean, it's maybe a little bit of a hoarding situation. How would you rate their overall appearance? One to five. I mean, one week out of the year, it is gorgeous. Oh gosh, like three. It is function. We're in survival mode. How would I? Oh, five. Most people, probably zero. Negative five? I don't know. Somewhere below zero, yeah. On a scale of one to five, I'm never satisfied. So I'm gonna say three. They're not organized right now, they are just there. The way that things end up usually getting stacked is that the stuff that I really wanted to read six months ago is at the back. Uh, and the stuff that I wanted to read three months ago is right in front of that. And the stuff that I wanted to read last week is in front of that. They deserve better from me, their mother. And the stuff that I have to read is in my backpack. So for me, I'll sometimes, there'll be like a little ornament. It'll be like a little, maybe a little gift. If somebody gets me like a tactile, small, tiny gift, that'll appear in the bookshelf somewhere next to a book that I think is thematically related. When I'm thinking about like ratio of my books to non-book stuff on my shelves, I'm thinking like 10 to one. In my house, we have a lot of books. We don't have a lot of room for knickknacks. The knickknacks belong on a dresser, not on a bookshelf. Uh, I would say that the, the ratio is undefined. I'm really prioritizing books on books on books and like maybe a cute picture frame, but mostly books. I like it to be mostly books. I want to live inside of a library and library doesn't have kitsch. The bookshelf is primarily for books. There's other places for other things. I do have a hierarchy and I'm not ashamed to admit that. So first is the pretty books. I do judge books by their cover, like a really pretty spine, uh, like a good color scheme, love it. Then books that are important to me. So my favorite books, books that I've read time and time again, signed books, those definitely deserve a good spot on your shelf. Pretty books, my favorite books, signed books, books I also own. I say that all the books on my shelf I'm displaying um, or else I wouldn't be keeping them. As far as like a priority, the bigger ones are probably displayed more prominently. Well, obviously you display the books that make you look the smartest, right? Like that's just something we all do. So the big ones are on display, you know? So it's a balance. Sometimes it's also like what books you need to have front of mind that like, oh, I need to read that soon. That has been on my TBR for eons. We have uh, a really large TBR. And so some of the bookshelves are double stacked. What about displaying books that are like solely because they're pretty and not for reading. I don't think I own any books that are just pretty and not for reading. Organizing in a rainbow. I get it. I get having that feeling wash over you as you look upon the words. It just feels like you're trying a little hard. Oh my God, I love a rainbow shelf. Uh, oh my, it's, again, back to aesthetics. We like a pretty shelf. And you want what's pretty? Matchy matchy. So we love organizing, Roy G. Biv, we love it. Organizing your books in a rainbow order is a lifestyle that I am not prepared to commit to at this time. It's cool. If you have the time, patience, and uh, the organizational ability to do that, good for you. Flipping books to just show the paper side. Flipping your books to just show the paper side is something that they only do on the internet. People don't actually do that, do they? But I mean, do, is this actually a trend? Do people do it? It feels disrespectful and confusing. Oh my goodness, why? Mm. Th that? No, I don't do that. I don't think so. I think that's just on TikTok. If I can't see the spine, that's how I'm gonna accidentally buy 12 copies of the same Shelby Maharan book, and I will read all of them. Buying pre-designed book stacks. <laughs> I mean, I think it's goofy. Get out of here. Why are, why, I mean, maybe I'm like, maybe I'm just not the guy. Maybe I'm just not the guy. That would lead me to believe that you don't read the books on your shelf. It's not my choice, but that's like, what? Leave that to the set decorators for television. Don't buy pre-made book stacks. Yeah, hey, listen, I just built a bookshelf, uh, but I don't read. So I need about 16 square feet of books. How much is that gonna set me back? <laughs>
I would never, ever, 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 ever buy a prearranged book stack. Have someone curate it based on your lifestyle that you're trying to project. So we're gonna give you 60 seconds to organize those books. Feel ready, let's do it. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, go. These always get lost. They just get lost. And I think this looks really cool because it's like old school, you know? I want, I want that old school vibe in my house. Oh, this is sad. This is not satisfying to me. A L. Oh my god, I can't spell. M P P M R. <laughs> I was just trying to like follow an impulse, you know? Didn't really have much time to rationalize. I do know that I generally like books without flaps because they tear, they get, I don't know, they get in the way. I like to do alphabetical by author name because then your series end up together. We're starting with Liz Acevedo and we end up with Adam Silvera. We've gone from A to S here. So I did alphabetical by last name, except fun fact, I don't think I know the alphabet. It's like it feels like a fire code violation. You see it in movies, you know, the guy has a whole bunch of stacks of books. In real life, it just never really looks as majestic. There's no shade thrown to the authors. If I have the book and it, it makes it into the state, I've read it and I've enjoyed it. You go by size, obviously. Tallest to the left, shortest on the right. Mess that up right here, but that's the heat of the moment is what we call that. Some of my favorite bookstores are the ones where you walk in and it's just like stacks of books everywhere. And But it's, it feels like a little bit like a treasure hunt. So it's like little hidden treasures amongst my bookshelf. You gotta find them. There's so many wonderful ways you can organize a bookshelf. This is probably the best because I did it. What would your dream bookshelf look like? I want Beauty and the Beast style library where I walk in and say, I've never seen so many books in my life. And then this like tall man who can't read, like lets me teach him how to read. And then I just get all of the books I want in a huge, huge, beautiful room with um, the, the ladder that you get to like do the Beauty and the Beast thing on. Oh, it would have one of those sliding ladders. It's pretty classic actually. Two story spiral staircase, wood grain, couches on the bottom floor. Not what my apartment in LA looks like. The opposite, actually. All hardbacks. Could it be Rainbow if someone else is doing the work? And every time I buy a new book, someone else would rearrange them for me. That would be chef's kiss. A room full of books. You open the door and it looks like almost passageways and they're stacked up really high. And there's a little chair in the middle to read in. You can just get in a little fort of books and read. I think that's the most, that would be the most beautiful book shelf, shelf room, shelf slash room. Uh, ever. And it would include none of my husband's books. Just mine. <laughs>